Section 1 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Devorah Allen. Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1. August 7th through December 30th, 1771. On the 7th of August, 1771, the conference began at Bristol in England. Before this, I had felt for half a year strong intimations in my mind that I should visit America, which I laid before the Lord, being unwilling to do my own will, or to run before I was sent. During this time my trials were very great, which the Lord, I believe, permitted to prove and try me, in order to prepare me for future usefulness. At the conference it was proposed that some preachers should go over to the American continent. I spoke my mind, and made an offer of myself. It was accepted by Mr. Wesley and others, who judged I had a call. From Bristol I went home to acquaint my parents with my great undertaking, which I opened in as gentle a manner as possible. Though it was grievous to flesh and blood, they consented to let me go. My mother is one of the tenderest parents in the world but I believe she was blessed in the present instance with divine assistance to part with me. I visited most of my friends in Staffordshire, Warwickshire, and Gloucestershire, and felt much life and power among them. Several of our meetings were indeed held in the spirit and life of God. Many of my friends were struck with wonder when they heard of my going, but none opened their mouths against it, hoping it was of God. Some wished that their situation would allow them to go with me, I returned to Bristol in the latter end of August, where Richard Wright was waiting for me, to sail in a few days for Philadelphia. When I came to Bristol I had not one penny of money, but the Lord soon opened the hearts of friends, who supplied me with clothes and ten pounds. Thus I found by experience that the Lord will provide for those who trust in Him. On Wednesday, September 4th, we set sail from a port near Bristol, and having a good wind, soon passed the channel. For three days I was very ill with the seasickness, and no sickness I ever knew was equal to it. The captain behaved well to us. On the Lord's Day, September 8th, Brother W. preached a sermon on deck, and all the crew gave attention. Thursday, 12th. I will set down a few things that lie on my mind. Whither am I going? To the new world. What to do? To gain honor? No, if I know my own heart. To get money? No. I am going to live to God, and to bring others so to do. In America there has been a work of God, some moving first among the friends, but in time it declined, likewise by the Presbyterians, but amongst them also it declined. The people God owns in England are the Methodists. The doctrines they preach, and the discipline they enforce, are, I believe, the purest of any people now in the world. The Lord has greatly blessed these doctrines and this discipline in the three kingdoms. They must therefore be pleasing to him. If God does not acknowledge me in America, I will soon return to England. I know my views are upright now. May they never be otherwise. On the Lord's Day, September 15th, I preached on Act 17, 30. But God now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. The sailors behaved with decency. My heart's desire and prayer for them was, and is, that they may be saved. But, oh, the deep ignorance and insensibility of the human heart! The wind blowing a gale, the ship turned up and down, and from side to side, in a manner very painful to one that was not accustomed to sailing. But when Jesus is in the ship, all is well. Oh, what would not one do? What would he not suffer to be useful to souls and to the will of his great Master? Lord, help me to give thee my heart now and forever. Our friends had forgotten our beds, or else did not know we should want such things, so I had two blankets for mine. I found it hard to lodge on little more than boards. I want faith, courage, patience, meekness, love. When others suffer so much for their temporal interests, surely I may suffer a little for the glory of God and the good of souls. May my Lord preserve me in an upright intention. I find I talk more than is profitable. Surely my soul is among lions. I feel my spirit bound to the new world, and my heart united to the people, though unknown. 
and have great cause to believe that I am not running before I am sent. The more troubles I meet with, the more convinced I am that I am doing the will of God. In the course of my passage, I read Selin's answer to Elisha Cole on the sovereignty of God, and I think no one that reads it deliberately can afterward be a Calvinist. On the Lord's Day, September 22nd, I preached to the ship's company on John 3, 23. But alas, they were insensible creatures. My heart has been much pained on their account. I spent my time chiefly in retirement, in prayer, and in reading the appeals, Mr. Durenti's life, part of Mr. Norris's works, Mr. Edwards on the work of God in New England, the Pilgrim's Progress, the Bible, and Mr. Wesley's sermons. I feel a strong desire to be given up to God, body, soul, time, and talents, far more than heretofore. September 29th. I preached to the ship's company again on these words. To you is the word of this salvation sent. I felt some drawings of soul towards them, but saw no fruit. Yet still I must go on. Whilst they will hear, I will preach, as I have opportunity. My judgment is with the Lord. I must keep in the path of duty. On the 6th of October, though it was very rough, I preached on deck to all our ship's company, from Hebrews 2, 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? The Lord enabled me to speak plainly, and I had some hopes that the interesting truths of the gospel did enter into their minds. I remember the words of the wise man, In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thy hand. As to my own mind, I long and pray that I may be more spiritual. But in this I comfort myself that my intention is upright, and that I have the cause of God at heart. But I want to stand complete in all the will of God, holy as he that hath called me is holy, in all manner of conversation. At times I can retire and pour out my soul to God, and feel some meltings of heart. My spirit mourns and hungers and thirsts after entire devotion. October 13th. Though it was very windy, I fixed my back against the mizzenmast and preached freely on those well-known words, 2 Corinthians 5.20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. I felt the power of truth on my own soul, but still, alas, saw no visible fruit. But my witness is in heaven, that I have not shunned to declare to them all the counsel of God. Many have been my trials in the course of this voyage, from the want of a proper bed and proper provisions, from sickness, and from being surrounded with men and women ignorant of God and very wicked. But all this is nothing. If I cannot bear this, what have I learned? Oh, I have reason to be much ashamed of many things which I speak and do before God and man. Lord, pardon my manifold defects and failures in duty. October 27th. This day we landed in Philadelphia, where we were directed to the house of one Mr. Francis Harris, who kindly entertained us in the evening, and brought us to a large church, where we met with a considerable congregation. Brother Pilmore preached. The people looked on us with pleasure, hardly knowing how to show their love sufficiently, bidding us welcome with fervent affection, and receiving us as angels of God. Oh, that we may always walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called! When I came near the American shore, my very heart melted within me to think from whence I came, where I was going, and what I was going about. But I felt my mind open to the people, and my tongue loose to speak. I feel that God is here, and find plenty of all we need. November 3rd. I find my mind drawn heavenward. The Lord hath helped me by his power, and my soul is in a paradise. May God Almighty keep me as the apple of his eye, till all the storms of life are past. Whatever I do, wherever I go, may I never sin against God, but always do those things that please him. Philadelphia, November 4th. We held a watch night. It began at eight o'clock. Brother P. preached, and the people attended with great seriousness. Very few left the solemn place till the conclusion. Towards the end, a plain man spoke, who came out of the country, and his words went with great power to the souls of the people, so that we may say, Who hath despised the day of small things? 
not the Lord our God, then why should self-important man? November 5th. I was sent for to visit two persons who were under conviction for sin. I spoke a word of consolation to them, and have hopes that God will set their souls at liberty. My own mind is fixed on God. He hath helped me. Glory be to him that liveth and abideth forever. Tuesday, November 6th. I preached at Philadelphia my last sermon before I set out for New York, on Romans eight thirty two. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? This also was a night of power to my own and many other souls. November 7th. I went to Burlington on my way to York, and preached in the courthouse to a large, serious congregation. Here also I felt my heart much opened. In the way from thence to York, I met with one P. Van Pelt, who had heard me preach at Philadelphia. After some conversation, he invited me to his house on Staten Island, and as I was not engaged to be at York on any particular day, I went with him and preached in his house. Still I believe God hath sent me to this country. All I seek is to be more spiritual, and given up entirely to God, to be all devoted to him whom I love. On the Lord's Day, in the morning, November 11th, I preached again to a large company of people, with some enlargement of mind, at the house of my worthy friend Mr. P. In the afternoon preached to a still larger congregation, and was invited to preach in the evening at the house of Justice Wright, where I had a large company to hear me. Still evidence grows upon me, and I trust I am in the order of God, and that there will be a willing people here. My soul has been much affected with them. My heart and mouth are open, only I am still sensible of my deep insufficiency, and that mostly with regard to holiness. It is true, God has given me some gifts, but what are they to holiness? It is for holiness my spirit mourns. I want to walk constantly before God without reproof. On Monday I set out for New York, and found Richard Boardman there in peace, but weak in body. Now I must apply myself to my old work, to watch and fight and pray. Lord, help. Tuesday, 13th. I preached at York to a large congregation on 1 Corinthians 2, 2. I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. With some degree of freedom in my own mind. I approved much of the spirit of the people. They were loving and serious. There appeared also in some a love of discipline. Though I was unwilling to go to York so soon, I believe it is all well, and I still hope I am in the order of God. My friend B. is a kind, loving, worthy man, truly amiable and entertaining, and of a childlike temper. I purpose to be given up to God more and more, day by day. But, oh, I come short. Wednesday, 14th. I preached again at York. My heart is truly enlarged, and I know the life and power of religion is here. Oh, how I wish to spend all my time and talents for him who spilt his blood for me. The Lord's Day, 18th. I found a day of rest to my soul. In the morning I was much let out with a sacred desire. Lord, help me against the mighty. I feel a regard for the people, and I think the Americans are more ready to receive the word than the English, and to see the poor Negroes so affected is pleasing. To see their sable countenances in our solemn assemblies, and to hear them sing with cheerful melody their dear Redeemer's praise, affected me much, and made me ready to say, Of a truth I perceive God is no respecter of persons. Tuesday, 20th. I remain in York, though unsatisfied with our being both in town together. I have not yet the thing which I seek, a circulation of preachers, to avoid partiality and popularity. However, I am fixed to the Methodist plan, and do what I do faithfully as to God. I expect trouble is at hand. This I expected when I left England, and I am willing to suffer, yea, to die, sooner than betray so good a cause by any means. It will be a hard matter to stand against all opposition, as an iron pillar strong, and steadfast as a wall of brass. But through Christ strengthening me, I can do all things. Thursday, 22nd. At present I am dissatisfied. I judge we are to be shut up in the cities this winter. 
My brethren seem unwilling to leave the cities, but I think I shall show them the way. I am in trouble, and more trouble is at hand, for I am determined to make a stand against all partiality. I have nothing to seek but the glory of God, nothing to fear but his displeasure. I am come over with an upright intention, and through the grace of God I will make it appear, and I am determined that no man shall bias me with soft words and fair speeches. Nor will I ever fear, the Lord helping me, the face of man, or know any man after the flesh, if I beg my bread from door to door. But whomsoever I please or displease, I will be faithful to God, to the people, and to my own soul. Saturday, November 24th. I went with Brother S. and Brother W. to Westchester, which is about twenty miles from New York. My friends waited on the mayor for the use of the courthouse, which was readily granted. On the Lord's Day morning, a considerable company being gathered together, I stood up in the Lord's power. Yea, I felt the Holy One was nigh. I judged that my audience needed to be taught the first principles of religion. So I spoke from those words, Now he commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Seriousness sat on the faces of my hearers, and the power of God came both on me and them, while I labored to show them the nature and necessity of repentance, and the proper subjects and time for it. In the afternoon the congregation was increased, both in number and seriousness. Some of the chief men of the town, the mayor and others, were present. I delivered my thoughts on those words, This is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son Jesus Christ, and love one another. I felt warmth in my soul while I set forth the nature and necessity of faith, and much enlargement towards my hearers. In the evening I preached at one M's, at a place called West Farms, to many persons on the love of God. The next day I preached at Westchester again to a large company, and felt a sense of God resting on my heart, and much love to the people. Being detained another day by the roughness of the weather, I preached another sermon on this text. Knowing therefore the terrors of the Lord, we persuade men. In the evening we went to the mayor's, where we lodged that night, and the next day at noon set out for York. The Lord's Day, December 2nd, I found a day of rest to my soul, and much liberty, both in the morning and evening, among the people. Oh, that I may live to God, and not to myself, and keep myself free from all worldly entanglements. Saturday, December 8th. As Brother B. was still at New York, I thought it best to make another visit to Westchester. I spent the evening and lodged at the house of one Dr. White, who appears to be an understanding man in the things of God. His wife is also of an amiable disposition, and is touched with a sense of her own state, and that of her neighbors. I spoke to her freely of the willingness of Christ to save now, but unbelief still prevailed. The next morning I went to the courthouse to preach, but the noise of the children, and the ill behavior of the unhappy drunken keeper, caused much confusion. In the afternoon my friend M. informed me that the door of the courthouse was shut against me. I felt myself at first a little troubled, but soon after a tavern-keeper gave me the offer of an upper room in his house, where I spoke on those words, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The power of God was with us, and many of the vilest of those present will, I trust, remember it as long as they live. In the evening I made another visit to West Farms and preached there, and my heart was there also touched with the power of God. I lodged that night at the house of Mr. O. Y. After supper, I asked the family if they would go to prayer. They looked at one another and said there was need enough. The next morning, when I asked a blessing before breakfast, they seemed amazed. I told them they wanted nothing but religion. The old father said it was not well to be too religious. The son said he thought we could not be too good. I soon afterwards took my leave of them, and preached in the evening at Eastchester to a few who seemed willing to hear, on those words, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I found myself straightened and shut up, but the Lord knoweth what he hath to do with me. Tuesday, December 10th. I rode to New Rochelle, and was received with great kindness by Mr. DeVoe and his family, and preached there to a few. The next day also I preached to a large company and found liberty and I believe the power of God was among us. From thence I rode to Rye, 
where a few people were collected together to hear the word, and the next day preached to them again. On Sunday, 14th, I rode back to Eastchester, and preached to a large company, and found some satisfaction in speaking on the one thing needful. On the Lord's Day I preached at New Rochelle in the church. My text was, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I felt an opening and was satisfied. I published myself to preach again in the afternoon, and those who had most opposed me before came to hear and behaved well. In the evening I preached in the house of my friend Mr. D. The next day I preached again at Mr. D.'s, and on Tuesday went to Rye, where I had many to hear, and felt some freedom of spirit. The next day I preached at Mernock, to a company of people who at first took but little notice of the worship of God. But I trust some of them felt the power of truth in their hearts. On Thursday I returned to York, and found my friends in peace. Lord's Day, December 22nd, I preached to a large company in the evening, and felt much power. I know that God was with us indeed, yea, was nigh to bless the people. On Christmas Day we had a very comfortable time. On Friday the 27th I set off with two of my friends for Staten Island. On the 28th we arrived at Justice W.'s, where we were entertained with the best his house afforded. From thence I went to my old friend V. P.'s, who received me with his former kindness, and collected a congregation for the evening, to whom I preached, but had a violent pain in my head. After service I went to bed, and was very ill. However, the next day, being the Lord's Day, I preached in the morning, and also in the afternoon, with some freedom of mind. In the evening I returned and preached at Justice W.'s. Having received an invitation to preach at the house of one Mr. W. D., at the east end of the island, I visited that place on my return to New York, where I had a comfortable time. On Tuesday we arrived in New York. We have been favored here with a very solemn watch night. Many felt the power of God. End of section 1